HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Every Day. The Prime Minister on a crusade in Paris to gain financial support to address climate change here in the Bahamas. Good evening, everyone. I'm Chris Saunders. And I'm Charisma Robinson. Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie addressed business leaders in France this week, noting areas the Bahamas will be tackling as it seeks to deal with the challenges of climate change. Meanwhile, the Environment Minister is mapping out a plan to ensure the Bahamas is able to access that critical funding. Clint Watson starts us off tonight from this report from Paris. The Bahamian government says the message can never be reiterated enough. Should the sea level rise five feet, 80% of the Bahamas will be covered with water. And every time there is a weather system that creates a disaster in the Bahamas, we are reminded of the seriousness of this issue. Environment Minister, the Honorable Kenry Dorsett. We're in discussions with countries right now uh, where we are going to be able to get technology to help us to understand the extent to which our oceans are acidifying um, so that we would be able to take corrective measures. At a separate breakfast focusing on small island developing states, Prime Minister the Honorable Perry Christie told attendees that funding to address the devastation by weather and climate systems is also an important measure, one that he also expects the local insurance industry in the Bahamas to participate in. As soon as I return home, I intend to look at the question of insurance and how this can help us recover the loss of damage from these storms. Insurance should be there to help in this, and as applications need to help a country, should not be denied by resort to outdated legalisms. This was our most recent experience with Hurricane Joaquin. Minister Dorset says the funds are needed for adaptation and mitigation of issues spurred by climate change, and that goes as far as impacting energy usage and even food consumption. The United Nations has established a fund of $1 billion to assist countries. To this end, the government will be considering a separate agency under his ministry to ensure access to the various streams of funding available. Already, much work has been done to ensure the Bahamas qualifies. We'll now be focusing on putting in place the national entity which will be utilized to obtain funding through the Green Climate Fund. That's what we'll be doing when we return home. And that will become the instrument by which we're able to access more funding uh, from the GCF uh, and other bodies. But we also are going to have bilaterals with countries. Um, countries are making offers to the Bahamas to see what they could assist us with. And they want bankable projects. They, they, they want projects that are well structured. Um, and so there are some things that we're going to be doing in the uh, foreseeable future to be enable us to access that funding. Some of it will be build, rebuilding coastal resilience in some of our islands. Some of it will be renewable energy focused. Some of it will be about building capacity uh, uh, in the country. Minister Dorset says another focus while in Paris will be to ensure the Bahamas per capita income is not used against us in obtaining funding. We're certainly pleased that the United States of America last year made the giant leap of saying that they will not use that against us in terms of grant funding or our ability to access concessionary funds. We now need the European Union and other countries to follow suit. And so we'll be having discussions in the margins to speak to those particular issues because our vulnerability and looking at uh, our ability to finance these things ourselves ought to take precedence over our per capita income. The Bahamas is making a very strong case here in Paris, but the true test will come after all of the formalities and window dressings are done. And over the next two weeks, negotiations will actually begin here at the conference. Coming out of that, we will know whether or not the kind of assistance we've been lobbying for has been granted. In Paris, Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. Bahamas Air is upgrading and expanding its fleet after the first one of five new airplanes touched down today. Cleopatra Murphy was there as the new aircraft arrived. With a price tag.
tag of $20.7 million, the first of Bahamas Air's five new state-of-the-art ATR-72-600 was welcomed with a water cannon salute as it arrived at the Lyndon Pindling International Airport Tuesday. Acting Prime Minister Philip Brave Davis, on hand for the commissioning, says government has spent $100 million on a new fleet, the next four of which are expected to arrive within the next six months. The investment, he says, is significant. This level of investment has not come to Bahamas Air since April 1990 under the leadership of the Progressive Liberal Party. It was then that the first of the Dash 8 fleet of aircraft was delivered to Bahamas Air. A feature of the new 70-seat plane is its wider seating. Bahamas Air Chairman Valentine Grimes says the new fleet will include another 70-seater, both that will service the busy routes and 350-seaters. The chairman says these new aircraft will increase capacity without having to increase frequency. This new fleet will improve service and reliability, thereby enhancing customer satisfaction, will reduce maintenance costs significantly, particularly over the next three years, will reduce fuel consumption, thereby saving costs, will reduce or eliminate dependency on sub-services. Minister of Transport and Aviation, the Honorable Glennis Hannah Martin, says the investment represents a major intervention in our national life. The fact that it has not only survived, but has done so well with the highest of standards says a lot about our country. And for me, this day reminds me that we are a great country with a great people capable of anything. Davis says the acquisition has tremendous implications when it comes to the country's commitment to decreasing its carbon emissions. The investment promotes safety and security while ensuring family islands are linked. Given targets the Bahamas has to decrease carbon emissions by, I'm happy also to confirm that a fleet of 10 ATR 72600 generates about 22,000 tons less emissions per year when compared to its direct turbo prop competitor. So it is expected that five ATRs will generate at 11,000 tons less emissions. Davis says the investment also highlights the government's commitment to enhancing safety, efficiency, and allowing the airline to effectively compete in the industry. Cleopatra Murphy, ZNS Network News. The redevelopment of Potter's Key is underway, and as the work takes place, the Ministry of Transport and Aviation is listening to the concerns of residents in the area. A town hall meeting last night, chaired by the Minister of Transport and Aviation, the Honorable Glennis Hannah Martin, was attended by Monique MP Richard Monique, Richard Lightborn, pardon me, along with other residents and business owners who may be affected by the development. Mr. Lightborn said, the work comes at the right time. The proposal that has been given, I think, um, is a good start in terms of uh, what needs to be done to upgrade the whole area to provide proper uh, access to, um, fit, uh, to determine the, um, <coughs> the layout of the, of the entire property. They're, they're adding um, proper facilities for the docking of the boats. They're uh, going to upgrade the, uh, the stalls on, on the area, provide a boardwalk um, along the waterfront. Um, the question really is to determining whether there's going to be uh, proper security, which is always a concern for a lot of people. Minister Hannah Martin was pleased with the response from the residents and addressed those security concerns. There was a concern that there would be increased traffic on William Street. The technical persons here do not necessarily believe that would be the case, but it's a legitimate concern. So we're going to look at it. But in terms of security, we're going to be introducing, really for the first time, security in a more measured way on the docking facility. Um, which is we're really, really raising the security levels at that facility. And secondly, we're going to be speaking with the police on, in terms of heightening security. Major upgrades taking place at the country's health care facility as the government prepares to roll out the national health insurance scheme early next year. The Minister of Health gave Rafa and Kerry this update. 
With just weeks to go before the implementation of national health insurance on January 1st, Minister of Health Dr. Perry Gomez is confident the country's health care systems will be ready once the program takes effect. We've been doing that all year, getting uh, different clinics uh, built up, uh, improved, and uh, becoming state-of-the-art you know, with, for the equipment that was previously there and so on. So you, you can look at it from island to island, you know, and uh, we opened a new clinic in Adelaide last week, um, first time in the history of the country. Managing Director of the Public Hospitals Authority, Herbert Brown, noted that efforts are also underway to upgrade the infrastructure at the Princess Margaret Hospital, the Rand Hospital in Grand Bahama, and clinics throughout the country. We would have last week completed the drawings for the expansion and upgrade of the maternity ward that is going to be uh, in line with the standard where no ward going forward will have more than four patients assigned to it this is a significant step forward because it provides some level of privacy that imagine what you have now with 15 and more patients in a unit that will certainly um, significantly reduce the amount of patients assigned to a ward. He noted that the accident and emergency section is also being upgraded. We expect that by the end of February of next year, those plans will be completed and we would be able to go out to tender, hopefully shortly thereafter. Uh, additionally, we are seeking to upgrade our imaging facilities at the Princess Margaret Hospital under Durand and Freeport, where we will replace the CT scans at Rand and in Grand Bahama, sorry, in Princess Margaret Hospital. And we will also, for the first time in the history of the public health care system, uh, seek to put in place an MRI, not only at the Princess Margaret Hospital, but at the Rand in Freeport. The managing director of the Public Hospitals Authority noted that additional staff will also be hired next year, paving the way for healthcare services to be expanded. Fern Carey, Southern S Network News. Thanks a lot, Fern. Minister of Agriculture and Marine Resources, the Honorable V. Alfred Gray, says with small farmers and agribusiness having a major challenge, gaining assets of funding from banks and other lending institutions, it is important to find an alternative means of helping them. This was the focus of a one-day seminar hosted by the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture held at British Colonial Hilton Hotel Monday. Minister Grace says it was intended to assemble the best of the best in the agricultural community to find a method which would be easier to obtain much-needed funding from worldwide institutions. Financial institutions from Canada, other islands in the Caribbean uh, are represented uh, at this conclave and so I'm optimistic because without financial assistance farming in the Bahamas and perhaps even in the wider Caribbean area will be always stifled in growth because without money you can really do very little business and agriculture today requires financial assistance just like any other business. Cultural sector and the ability to feed the country are both important. Minister Gray appealed to banks to rethink their lending policies when it comes to farmers and farming assistance. We need their partnership in this process. Uh, the Bahamas imports $900 million worth of food. And if we're going to make a reasonable dent in that import bill. Farming has to be done on a large scale, much larger than we are presently doing it. And very few farmers, if any, could afford the capital to start the business. And I believe once the business is started and it gets rolling, it will pay for itself. Coming up, an important seminar held today for law enforcement professionals. For World AIDS Day, you're watching The Bahamas Tonight.